Well, they're designed to ensure that we can leave on the 31st, as we said we would in the manifesto, and they're there to make sure that the uh, House of Commons has an opportunity properly to scrutinise the bill, but also that we can get it done promptly. And that means that uh, the Queen's speech, as you know, will be on Thursday, um, and then the withdrawal agreement bill will have its second reading on Friday. The Prime Minister will open that debate. Uh, my colleague Steve Barclay will close it. Then uh, there'll be a brief break for Christmas, and then the bill will be scrutinised on the floor of the House. And to put it into law, as we understand it, that there'll be no extension of the extension period beyond the exactly. end of 2020. Absolutely. So isn't that putting a gun to Britain's head, if you like, because if there's no agreement, it means that we'll be leaving without a deal? Well, both sides um, uh, in the political declaration, the document that goes alongside the withdrawal agreement, have committed themselves to concluding the new relationship that we have after we've left the European Union by the end of 2020. Not the European Union, haven't they? They've said that proper negotiations will take longer. Uh, it's there in the political declaration. They're committed to it in black and white. So you, can, you, you believe you'll have what done? Everything done? Yep. Trade deal? The whole lot? Yes. And will that get priority over negotiations with the United States, for example? Uh, I think that uh, we'll be talking to other countries as well, because what we want to do is to make sure that we have the opportunity outside the European Union to deepen relations with other countries. Um, I don't know which of those countries will be the first alongside the EU to conclude a new trade deal with us, but it will certainly be the case that we'll be operating at pace to get those deals done.